This here is my homemade outboard. I've actually been running this for years. If you've ever wanted to build one, this is uh, about how you would go ahead and do it. Um, it does work. It's pushing a 13 foot Lone Star. I've had five people in the boat. Mm, with five people in the boat, it'll do a couple miles an hour. And if you got a heavy current or something, I would not suggest going <laughs> with five people because you end up going about one to two miles an hour. With one person, eh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming maybe five miles an hour, maybe. Um, this was built using a Johnson 9.5 horse lower unit that came with the boat, but the rings were fried and it was not worth trying to fix. The cylinders were destroyed when the engine froze. So I had a free lawnmower I got off Craigslist and figured, yeah, well, let's try building one of these. No one thought it would work, but I guess I showed them. I, of course, changed the fluid in the lower unit, removed the power head. The spline shaft on the shaft that goes into the lower unit, I cut the end of the crankshaft off of the Johnson. And I don't know if you can kind of see it in there. And surprisingly, that was, if I remember correctly, building 11 sixteenths. If I remember, don't quote me on that. I went down to U Joints Inc., which is a place out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we're from here. Actually, we're in Rio Rancho, but it's just a suburb of Albuquerque. And the Briggs and Stratton, the lawnmower engine will not work. So if you have plans on using a lawnmower, don't bother. It is completely useless because a lawnmower has does not have a heavy flywheel. It uses the blade. <coughs> I thought the prop and the lower unit would act as a flywheel, but it does not. A few years ago, actually I think I built this in 2011, or maybe 2010, nope, prob nope 2010, uh, it was maybe even 2009, I can't really remember, it was before my daughter was born and she was four. Anyways, this thing here, I bought off line from a place, if I remember, it was like smallengines.com or something. It is a four and a half torque power. I guess they're not doing horsepower anymore. Briggs and Stratton flatty heavy flywheel. Standard old Briggs and Stratton. Probably the engine probably used on a small pressure washer or a log splitter. Also has the standard shaft, as you can see there. Using the PTO U joints, you can very easily adapt it. I think the using the U joints is a lot better, in my opinion, because you don't have to line up the engine with a coupler perfectly straight with that shaft. And I'll admit, my handiwork welding here, I mean, the welds are held, but I just used scrap metal I had laying around. Bolted the engine to this frame here welded a rod with a dirt bike grip on the end there for the tiller handle used the transom clamp off of the Johnson as you can see what I did here I just went ahead and bolted it to the lower and welded up here to the upper you can see there And it surprisingly works very well. I left the gear shift, which on a Johnson was kind of a goofy setup. So the easiest thing I thought I could do was just bolt this little lever here. Now, this lever, you can either go forward or reverse by pulling it up or down. But the, end, the Briggs and Stratton will not idle low enough to shift gears. Therefore, you have to shut off the engine and shift forward or reverse, which is no different than the Johnson sitting over here because that's a direct drive with no transmission. 
you know, changed all the fluids. It's, like I said, it's a brand new engine. Well, it's not new anymore, but it was new when I bought it. <laughs> and go ahead and give her a prime. Turn her on. And give her a pull. She smokes a little on startup now because she's old and she's been heavily used. But if you want, we can put her in. Just pull up on the lever there. And let me start her up. Make sure she doesn't hit the bucket here. I'm going to set the camera down for just a second, maybe. As you can see, it spins the prop, no problems, and then you can just put the old transmission in neutral again for next time. The cool thing about this is, is this can sit for a while, and you can just keep it running all year round because you don't have to worry about having water cooling it because it is air cooled. Make sure you do like I did. I did not learn this the hard way, thank goodness, because that would have been funny when you got to the lake, but I did remove the water pump impeller out of the lower unit. Reason being is you do not want it pumping water. As you can see, it works well. This is how I recommend building one. It's not fast by any means, but it does push this boat with multiple people. It'll also pull that inner tube in there. Not very fast, of course, but it does pull it. This boat had an original engine, which was a 28-horse McCulloch, which, <laughs> luck, my luck has it, it uh, blew up on the water. It actually made us back to shore, but it did blow when the water pump died in the middle of the lake. but This is the 13 foot Lone Star. I've also this year I got that little Johnson for it. We're going to see if that little Johnson moves the boat any faster. But the little Johnson I'm a little weary about so I'm going to keep my air cooled one on the side as a backup. The boat's a 64 and this year I removed the windshield as it was pretty scratched and the plastic was pretty worn out and I used some pipe and tube and built this little <laughs> what looks like a roll bar for the boat and that way I can put a tarp over it so we can all stay cool this summer we do have a trip planned in early August And there will be another video of the Johnson Seahorse. I just got that running. Total cost of this engine, uh, less than, well, if you already have an in, a blown outboard and you already have the lower unit, good for you. If you don't, then you're, of course you're going to have to get one of those, but since I had that laying around, that's okay. It was less than 200 bucks in parts. The engine, I think, was... It was a hundred bucks and it was like twenty bucks to ship the engine to the house. Keep in mind this was years ago there, you know, so it, The prices of these engines may have gone up, but you can also use any engine. I actually want to attempt to build one using a snowmobile engine because the cool thing about an air-cooled two-stroke 
The snowmobile engine is it can run upside down, side to side, as long as the carburetor is right side up, which in the rubber boot you can usually turn.